So before Azure uh, jumping into data engineering and what exactly data engineering, let's talk about what exactly it's the cloud and what are the various components of the uh, cloud and uh, why uh, cloud is becoming famous uh, instead of uh, like uh, how it is different from the uh, regular on-premise environment. Right? So if you see about like a few decades back, like whenever an application you are developing, suppose your application developing or you are hosting an application, okay, everything used to be person dependent, like human dependent, right? So suppose I have one application, like web application I'm developing and I'm trying to host it and my web application is an e-commerce application where I, I sell some of my products to uh, Western countries, Western countries customers, right? So to develop that, what I need to do to, uh, to host that application and everything I need to take care, right? So I need to take a physical location, right? A building, right? And I need to procure some servers, hardware, software. Then I need to develop my own application then host on those servers, then take, take care of that performance, backend, frontend, network, security, everything the person needs to take care, even though like from department to department, but still it's based on the persons, right? That was all about uh, LDR on-premises environment, right? On-premises environment, everything used to be person dependent right and there were some limitations uh, in that because like say suppose in the same building uh, you are uh, handling uh, you are having those servers and all suppose there is some building collapse some power fl power fluctuation happened the every and uh, some uh, fire accident happened then all your data all your application is gone the persons who are waiting for your application to come up so they will be disappointed eventually you will be losing your customer base Right, and also say suppose apart from that some natural disaster happened, some tsunami or some earthquake that time also your your entire application is gone, right? And say suppose you have like your limit of your application is only uh, like uh, ten thousand customers with thousand products, right? And uh, some point of time like uh, Christmas season, like there will be massive. Uh, what is a massive sales will happen right because everybody start buying something and your your uh, uh, what do you say your company has your website has good number of products with uh, good uh, sales and all so definitely the customer base will be increased so suddenly there will be a spike in the customer base then your system will crash right the people will disappoint again your customer base will lose and eventually the trust or your uh, uh, the trust or your uh, what do you say the importance or your uh, uh, whatever the popularity that you gained your uh, from your company or from your website that is also will be lost right so these are all some of the limitations which were happening in the regular uh, on premise environment so to overcome that slowly the data engineering started evolved right uh, sorry the on uh, the cloud started evolved so what happens in the cloud? So whatever I was talking about, the storage, the compute power, the servers, the networking, all those will be provided over the internet. So instead of regular human uh, physical storage, physical thing, okay, all these services will be provided over the internet so that you can use those services and you can take care of your application. So I was talking about the same application. You can uh, take some VM servers, you can take care of OS, okay? You can uh, use uh, database from the cloud, everything you can take an application also you can deploy and the performance will be monitored by the uh, cloud, right? The networking will be taken care, the security will be taken care by the cloud. The only thing is you need to develop application and host on the cloud, that's it. Right, so th those are the things like this. So all the human uh, perform uh, per human related uh, issues or operations were there. Those are being taken care by the cloud provider. Right. So delivery of computing service services over the internet is the cloud. So in a nutshell, so whatever the services I was talking about. So if you talk about those services in this over the internet, that is a cloud. So we have leading uh, cloud providers like we have Azure for which MS is a cloud provider. We have GCP, we have AWS, various cloud providers we have. Right? So in this case, what happens? So like same example, some natural disaster happened. So, 
So whenever you're using the cloud, so your data, your application will be replicated to other regions. So if something happens in a particular building, some particular country, but the copy which is available in another region will come up and so that there won't be any disturbance to the customers while accessing your application for that particular example, right? So this is how cloud has many advantages over the on-premises. That is the reason all the applications started migrating from their on-premises to cloud applications. Right? Then let's talk about data engineer. Then what is the data engineer and what exactly data engineer does and all. Right. So before the data engineering and all, so let's talk about what is the data and all. So like if you talk about like three to four decades back when the software just started evolving, okay, and the people started using some database, right? It's like Oracle or SQL Server or something, whatever is it, the initial database, okay? So when the people were using database, there was some concept of the database developer. So who used to create the, like design the database and uh, uh, implement this uh, data, uh, like uh, create procedure, create the tables and write some procedures and all. There used to be database developer who takes care of this operational database, right? So over the period of, and uh, eventually the, the management, the top management used to get the reports out of the same database, right? The operational database. But over the period of time, as the data was growing a lot and a lot, Right? The database is growing multifolded. The people realized that there should be a separate database for reporting purpose exclusively. We should not disturb this operational database. Right? Then the terminology of data warehousing came into picture. Then the data warehousing developer, ETL developer, right? For the reporting, then is a BI developer. These are all people came into picture. Right? Still, the data was huge, but the data was very limited, and the number of sources also very limited. Like we have used to have Excel files or uh, data, uh, like web uh, web data, or some uh, what do you say this uh, CSV files, like text files, or some uh, database Oracle database. Like we used the data used to be spread across the database, the files, and some. Uh, what do you say, ERP data, those data you used to have, not more than that, okay? So the job was very easy, right? And exclusively the data used to be used for the reporting purpose and all, right? Over the period of time, as the technology started evolving, okay, technology started evolving, we started having more and more sources for the data, right? We have social media, we have high voltage devices, right? And we have uh, so much uh, data outside existing. Right? Even if you take an hospital, the hospital have tons of customers, tons of people, right? tons of patients. We have huge amount of the data. Let's say, suppose you have social media, right? You are using the social media, then you are producing something video in that, then uh, in the social media like YouTube, then there's a the data. You're uploading a, a photo in Instagram, that there is the data. You're writing some message, some posting in Facebook, that is the data. You're tweeting some message in the Twitter, that is the data, right? So the, the amount of the data has increased and everything is connected with the data, right? Say, suppose you are uh, going on the highway with the speed, then speed gun is capturing your speed, then there is the data, right? And uh, capturing your photo, there's the data. You're going to hospital and you're getting scanned. All the data, the streaming data will be uh, stored somewhere, then there is the data. Right, all these kinds of data is there, and eventually, over the period of time, the companies realize that we have so much amount of the data with us, okay, and we should use this data for the better planning for the future, for organization development, organization growth, okay. Then the data scientist came into picture. So data scientist will analyze all the data, then it will create some A and ML models for the better future, right. Uh, give me a minute, one second, I'm getting one call.
sorry about that. Yeah. So then the data scientist will consume the data and he'll prepare all AI and ML models and all those things he, he does that, right? So that's about the uh, data scientist. But so the data scientist, this data needs to be analyzed. The data is a huge and data scientists need a proper data, right? It's in the, it is uh, it's spread across multiple sources, multiple formats and all. So then the date that then the role of data engineer came into picture. So what exactly data engineer does? Data engineer gets all the data spread across from multiple sources. He gets the data, he makes it a simple unified format and put it in a common storage so that data scientists will access it and create A and ML models, right? So the responsibility of the data engineer is to convert all the heterogeneous data into single format, a common format and store it in a single place that is the responsibility of the data engineer right so basically it creates a pipelines to transfer data into formats that are readable and usable for the data scientist right so converts in such a way that suitable for analysis the pipeline involves taking data from discrete sources and storing them in a single warehouse where data will be represented uniformly that's what i'm saying right so that the what is the pipeline so whatever the conversion, whatever the extraction conversion is doing from end to end, all this package is known as a pipeline. So basically data engineer develops this pipeline so that data scientists will consume and create his own research and all, right? So that's how data engineering started evolved as the data was increasing lot and lot, right? So in, in a high level, the data engineer will have four phases. One is ingest, that is store, prepare and train, model and so. These are the four phases in the data engineering. So if you see here, data engineering has many phase, many data. Like if you see here, one second. So if you see here, we have structured data, unstructured data, like we have business data, we have like media data, all those data. Now it's the responsibility of the data engineer to ingest the data. Ingestion is nothing but extracting the data. So extracting or ingesting, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> yeah. So extraction or ingestion is a, one of the key phase in the data engineering. That's the first phase where we ingest the data, extracting the data and we store the data into our ecosystem. Okay, one of the storage location. So ingest is a phase where you connect to all external sources and extract the data. Then, then you store the data somewhere in intermediate zone. There's a store phase. The next phase is prepare and train. So in this phase, what do you do? Using various technologies, depending upon the data, depending upon the volume of the data, we use one technology and we convert the data. We transform the data as according to the end user requirement, right? So once you transfer the data in the prepare and train, finally you load the data into data warehouse or any other application technology so that the data scientist will consume the data a developer will consume the data so that developer will generate the reports out of it, right? So this is, these are the four phases of the data. Ingest, store, prepare and train, model and so, right? So if you see this entire uh, thing, entire thing, so almost end to end, right from getting the data from providing into modern data, uh, like a standard data is the job of data engineer and the consuming and doing AI ML models or reports is a data scientist or business analyst, okay, does only generating the reports or generating the AI and ML model. If you see this entire end to end, 70% of the job is being done by the data engineer who is kind of a backbone for any data project and 20 to 30 percent is role is being done by the end user who is data scientist or data engineer right so that is the reason if you're onboarding any application to the data science or data warehouse majority of the application majority of the role is being done by the data engineer right so that is the reason you see 
tons of requirements, huge number of requirements in the market for the data engineer because of his importance. So if you say if you need a if you are currently onboarding a data uh, like sorry uh, if you are onboarding a data science project, if you need one or two data scientists, at least three to six data engineers you need for the same project, right? Suppose you are onboarding a data uh, warehouse project. So that also you need like one or two developers only, Power BI developers, a tablet report, but developing for the data warehouse, you need good number of data engineers, right? So this is at high level about the data engineering different phases. So if you see the, the difference between data scientist and data engineer, data engineer just design, build and arrange the data to be clean. So data scientist uses the clean data, create hypothesis and AI and ML models, but the responsibility of providing that clean data is in the hands of the data engineer, right? So I can say that data engineer is kind of a backbone of entire data science project. And without that, without data engineer, there is no data science project, right? So this is a high level, the difference between data scientist and data engineer. Right. So at high level, what I can say based on the previous two slides, a data engineer is nothing but he does BI plus, he is kind of a, he analyzes the BI plus big data, okay, applying business deals on the big data, he analyzes the data and he, then he ingest it, then he process it, then he store it, then finally he takes care of access. So access is also one of the key thing because you need to give the right access on the right amount of the data to the right people, right? That is also one of the key challenge of the data engineering. So data engineering involves all these different roles and responsibilities. So what is big data then? Big data is nothing but the data which is in a huge in the volume and spread across multiple sources, multiple formats is a big data. So if you, if you see the traditional big data project, what they were doing, they handle the data which is in multiple formats, multiple sources, and multiple, uh, are the huge in the science, they use it to process all in the on-premise uh, applications. But now as the date, the cloud started evolve, all those modern, the legacy big data applications started using the data engineering technologies. So there are the three kind of projects will be there at a high level for the data engineering. One is when you're fresh onboarding the data science project, then you need to implement the data engineering. Otherwise, you're creating a fresh, you're creating a data warehousing project. So that, then also you need data engineering project. Or you're migrating legacy data warehousing project from SSIS or informatica and all to the data engineering, the modern data engineering, then the data engineering comes into picture. Or you're converting the legacy and premise big data projects to modern data engineering Azure data and then also you need Azure data engineering. So this is a way because of these four different use cases, the, there are more and more data engineering projects in the, pro, uh, in the market. And if, of course it leads into more and more demand to the data engineering, right? So this is the data engineering at high level. So what are the data engineering skills? I we spoke about what is data engineer, what a data engineer does and what are the various technologies you should learn. But before that, what's the skill set? What is the prerequisite if you if somebody wants to become a data engineer? So one is the SQL. SQL is the key skill for any data related activity, right? If it is a database developer, ETL developer, reporting developer, BI developer, data engineering developer, everyone in everyone interacts with the data very closely with the help of the queries, right? So that is the reason SQL is one of the essential skill for the data engineering. Next, data modeling techniques, because the data is in multiple format, spread across multiple places, the data is a huge, you should have right modeling techniques. So it's not a prerequisite for this course, but data engineer over the period of time should have this skill. And ETL and BI. So data engineers kind of will have extension of ETL and BI. So that is the reason he should have some of the, he or she should have some of the basic concepts, basic terminology of the ETL Bay. So what is data warehouse? What is fact table? What is the snowflake uh, uh, design? What is the star, star schema? All these basic, basic terminology uh, skills he should have. 
architectural projections. So one of the key element of the data engineering also architectural project it means because there's various tools, various platforms, various libraries are there. Okay, so the data engineer should pick up the right key, right skill at the right time for the right amount of the data based on the data, based on the data volume, based on the data size. You should have, you should pick up the right tool. So that is the reason you should have the architectural projections to pick up the right technology. Ability to connect the dots from source to destination. That means logical skills. You should have good logical skills to connect from the source to target. So what I need to do to transform all this data from multiple sources to the single format so the data scientist will consume the data. You should have the ability to connect the dots. It's logical skills you should have. Of course, the cloud you should have because the cloud is essential for any data engineering. Everything done with the help of the cloud only. So in this case, we have Azure Cloud. So Azure Basics one must have. Then the Python. So all modern data engineering like PySpark, like Databricks or a Spark Pool in the data synapse analytics, we use the Python. So having Python knowledge advantage. So it's not a mandatory, but it's good to have because some of the transformations we might need to write in the Python. So learning Python, uh, whatever is related to the Databricks or PySpark, it's one of the good advantage, right? So these are the data engineering skill one must have. So who can start? If you're a DB developer, because you already know like database and all, so it's very easy to switch to data engineering. So DB developer can start, ETL developer can start, DBS, because DBS day to day, they deal with the data and they know about the database and query some of the basic queries. So DBS also is very easy to start. And also over the period of time, as the cloud is increasing its capacity its features, over the period of time, DBA themselves may lose its, may lose their, uh, what do you say, uh, their role eventually to the cloud, right? So that is the reason it's a good start for the DBS to jump into data engineering. And big data developers, yeah, of course, because if you are a big data developer, you know, like data volumes and handling with the big data with various combination with these tools is easy to shift to data engineering side. And also majority of the big data projects are slowly shifting to the data engineering. So it's also one of the good advantage for the data engineering. And data analysts, that means reporting developers like uh, Tableau or PowerDB, SSR developers are there. For those people also is very good to join. App developers, because if you're a .NET developer at all, Java developer, for you also is very easy to shift to data engineering because in some point of time, data engineering also needs some of the uh, programming programmers, right? So that is the reason it's very good advantage if you have the combination of the programming language and as well as the data engineering skill. Fresher, yeah, if you don't, you are just starting your career uh, into the IT and it's very good to start with the data because most of the companies now started taking even the freshers with no experience because there is a huge demand in the market. Demand for data engineers. Yeah, so demand by data engineers is huge. So as per the latest survey, more than 50 to 60% of the job roles are being occupied by the data engineer because of the various reasons that I explained in previous sessions. Yeah, so apart from that, we have exam DP203. So which gives a certification of Azure Certified Data Engineer. So where various skill set will be measured. One is design, implement data storage, data processing, data security, data storage and processing, uh, optimization, all this will be measured as part of the DP203 exam. So it is good advantage if you attempt this exam so that it will, uh, it will add a good weightage to your resume, right? So these are all about the data engineering introduction, what all it has. And coming uh, to the topics which we are going to cover. So there are a good number of topics which are going to cover. Let me go through that one second. Yeah, so we have ETL W in data engineering basics. We are talking about we'll talk about what is ETL, what is DWH, what are the basics of ETL, right? And we'll talk about Azure basics, what is cloud, advantage of the Azure cloud, 
what are the various terminology which are uh, good to know for the data engineer azure basics then we'll start with the actual uh, actual data engineering i think so azure storage we'll cover blob and ads gen 2 in azure sql azure data factory and azure synapse analytics we are going to cover data bricks we are going to cover and some of the introduction for the cosmos db stream analytics we'll give some of the introduction the one or two examples with the cosmos db and stream analytics and security encryption but in deep in depth cover will be done for the storage sql data factory synapse analytics and the data bricks also we will cover a, a good number of content for the database so you don't need to have exclusive another training for the database so in such a way we will cover for the data bricks also whatever it is required for the real time experience and one of the apart from all these things i was focusing also i'll i'll be focusing on synapse analytics so which is kind of a integrated modern data engineering suit in which at a single place you can perform all data engineering operations okay synapse analytics is one of the very uh, great tool and it is going to rule entire data engineering market in next to one or two years so that also we are going to cover in detail and for all these things i listed down good labs hands on which we are going to cover so at high level it has only 36 but if i decompose further it will be around 50 to 60 uh, various sessions will be there which we are going to cover into the lab right so these are the all uh, at the high level which are going to cover any doubts hi pc rohini here yeah hi rohini yeah uh, are you uh, what are the uh, things that you are going to cover in the data bricks like uh, will you cover scala python in detail scala python scala. i am not going to cover so uh, whatever the uh, whatever the what you say what are the data frames what are the transformations that we are going to cover that we will be doing well that we will do using the PySpark. so we are going to use the PySpark. so, so your, your main concentration is on PySpark, not on the scala not scala no yeah. not scala okay. we are going to use PySpark because it is one of the widely used uh, yeah. uh, uh, language now in the data bricks because earlier the people used it to use the scala and all but mm -hmm. now as the Python started increasing its popularity because of the data science. Even data engines also using the PySpark. Okay. Right. And here we'll use the data frames and data delta lake. We'll 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 cover this delta lake streams and the data frames in detail. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi, PC. This is Lila Krishna. Yeah. Hi, Lila. Please. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Based on this training, uh, training can we uh, 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 complete the uh, this one certification, Microsoft certification based on our training? So for the certification, see, this is not a certification, purely certification oriented training. So these are a mix of certification as well as the real time uh, use cases right so but it covers almost 30 to 40 percent of the exam because when it comes to certification it will be more of theoretical right but here yeah. we are we are concentrating more of practicality so but it covers 30 to 40 percent it gives good advice good hints for the exam so you can uh, extend your learning uh, methodology from there and you can uh, clear uh, you can attempt the exam very easily yeah. thanks yeah. And if it comes to modern data uh, like DP203, majority of the questions will be around synapse analytics. Okay. And anyway, we are going to cover synapse analytics in detail. So it, it, it won't be any problem uh, for you to attempt the exam based on the training. But the only thing is you should practice more questions. You should read some content, blogs and all. So it, it, will, it will make you too comfortable to attempt the exam. Yeah. Thanks. Sir. Yeah. yeah. Hi, this is M. Raghu here. Yeah, hi, so Raghu. what is the du duration of the course like? So duration of the course will be six to eight weeks and weekly five days. Okay. So it will be I, easily it will take 40 to 50 sessions based on the uh, my pace and based on the your pace. Okay. Yeah. And every every technology, whatever I'm going to cover, so it will, I, it will be done based on the use case based. Say suppose I'm going to cover some of the uh, like uh, data factory. So I'll be taking one simple example. 
then I will, I'm going to cover all the related activities in that use case. I'm not going to say that the activity one, activity two, I'm not going like uh, from uh, like uh, very basic level, I will not be teaching that that doesn't help you. So instead of that, I'll take a use case, then based on the use case, whatever the activities, what are the components it will use. So I will cover all those components based on that use case. So that it will also give you advantage of uh, uh, like trying to understand better and be, uh, more uh, underst better understanding in terms of the real time thing. Uh, hi, this is Suman here. Yeah, hi, Suman. How is the practical? You have a separate lab will be there, or how is this? No, here only during the course of time only. Say, so suppose I'm, I'm talking about data factory, then I'll talk about the overview and basic components. Then I will jump into data factory, then I will start explaining about the pipelines and all. So, practical things we have separate uh, uh, user ID and all the things. Now, what it mean be? Uh, my question is uh, data factory and uh, these things with little uh, practical experience required. How hands on we can get? So we are going to do hands on in the uh, during the class, right? I'm going to I'll be explaining during the class so that uh -huh. then you can practice the same thing uh, once the class is over. So you'll be having your own Azure account, your own Azure account. So with that, your own Azure account, you can you can practice the things, whatever I explain. Okay. And for uh, after one of the okay. after every session, uh, after uh, any uh, after every session, so wherever it is applicable, I'll try to give some of the assignments also that you need to practice over the uh, your uh, own Azure account. Okay. 